this is the running theme for the week. It's literally all go. Um, I spent last week while I wasn't here preparing everything for a really good week here. So we've booked um, a rock crusher, which we desperately needed. Very noisy. It's just turned up and it was a struggle getting it through. Um, he managed quite easily. Uh, he, he's used to, you know, managing these machines, but my God, it was tight, like five mil either side, five centimeters, sorry. This is what we're on with. That probably my job for the rest of the day or week, depending on how quick it goes and uh, all that good stuff. So Dave's on with finishing that dormer roof. Uh, loads of jobs to do. We've got to tidy up inside, which will be later on. So we can't run this thing too long um, or late into the night because it's quite noisy. So yeah, checking out this machine. It's a, a Rhino 4000 Crusher. Um, it's 80 pound a day plus VAT, so it's 100 pound a day. Uh, you put your own fuel back in it and I'll give you a run through. So this bit of kit, on and off switch, forward crusher, reverse, you know, if something gets jammed. Uh, tracking, forward, reverse, and then you use these as left and right track. So you can adjust the jaw depending on what kind of grade you want. Um, in here is the hopper, so you'll put your rocks in there. This thing vibrates back and forth, and that's the clearance gap. So depending on how thick we want our MOT, um, some of these rocks are quite tough. Now, I'm not sure how it's going to get through the likes of uh, granite, which I think that's granite. Uh, it's quite tough. Um, I'm not a geologist, even though I did like it as a kid. Obviously, concrete block, your brick, which will crush up really easy. Um, this stuff, I'm not so sure about. Uh, it's natural stone. So, yeah. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Maybe save the bigger bits for the walls. Uh, had the idea of where well, the party wall is there. Um, installing some concrete posts and then building the wall around it. And then fence panels on top. So yeah, all this mess, hopefully it should munch through it. So whilst I'm having my breakfast, uh, just run through a few bits we need to do. So we've marked out everything on the inside. Uh, for the window seat, we're going to take out the remainder of this wall. Dave will block up the remainder. Um, we've got all, well, we've got windows that are ordered and they'll be ready for next week. So that's a, a one meter by 1.5 and that will be a nice window seat. So we've got the electricians coming on Wednesday. Uh, there's a few jobs to be done. I desperately need to tidy up. Um, up to probably waist height, this little bit here needs uh, blocking up because they'll put a new consumer unit there as well as the uh, new meter. Days on, we're doing the dormer and upstairs. So this stud work in here is, uh, is done. It just needs marking out. And in here, we, uh, we finished one of our last jobs the other week. Um, but there's just a few little bits that need finishing. So this room all needs to get tidied. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a very busy week. Right, so this is where we're at and quite impressed with this machine. It's done really, really well. So it's crushing pretty much anything you can fit in it. Um, I was very apprehensive of how it would crush some of this stone. 
Um, you've got a few different types here. So I'm not a geologist, but um, I can tell <laughs> that's different. That one is, that one is sandstone, granite, mixed, um, brick, concrete block. Um, it's pretty much just doing everything. It's quite loud, so I can imagine the neighbours aren't too happy. But um, it's got to be done. So we've got through a good, I'd say, two tonne now. And that is within the space of, I'd say, an hour. Um, we've not much room to manoeuvre. And the tracks on these aren't very powerful, so... As you can see, I have to dig out the mud in order for the machine to move. But yeah, quite a bit to go at. Um, any obscure boulders that don't quite fit, I'm just putting them to one side. So yeah, it's uh, hard grass, but it's quite rewarding. It'll be uh, pretty good when it's done. So. Dinner time, half past one. Um, <laughs> very, very tired. It's hard graft. I think the best setup would be two men with like a platform. One's loading the platform and the other one's putting it in the hopper. Or digger. Um, but uh, yeah. Keep going, I'll show you what I've been doing. So, some decent progress there, uh, if I say so myself. I'd say there's got to be about eight tonne there, and uh, more to go. It's working out how I'm going to get this round. I might get rid of this here and then back it up because um, I need to get rid of this here so. Don't want to be traveling too far for the machine. But, um, I bought pie for dinner and uh, have a minute. So, this is currently where we're at. We've done, oh, I wouldn't like to guess, I think I've done roughly about 10 ton. Um, I think it'll be like a two day hire. If I get a shimmy on tomorrow, um, it's just run out of fuel. I've not run it out, I just stopped where the line was. Um, so we've got this bit remaining. Um, there's a few bits to break up. And then over here, we've got... A bit of rubble there. And then there's some... The, and then a little bit in the corner. Right, so more membrane, more insulation for the roof. Got a few bits in the back. Wow, that was very expensive. Um, 120 plasterboard, 37 insulated boards <laughs> oh very expensive and uh yeah that came up to 2400 pounds the other about give or take a few quid so feel that one <laughs> but that's you know when the first fix uh, electrics are in we can get the plaster boards on we can then get quotes for plastering. Happy days, just progress. Keep going, keep throwing money at it. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. So I thought I heard a bang when I went round the roundabout and then you can smell it. Oh, went and got fuel for the crusher and uh, just pulled up and they've both been lied down. So yeah, we've got a nice bottle of diesel. Um, There's about a quarter, and one of them's completely empty. So happy days. That's uh, whoa, 
45 quid down the drain. So this is part two. <clears throat> Dave's just cut this out and we're gonna have the window seat. Um, so saving a bit of block, keeping that corner intact. And uh, all these blocks will be crushing today. So hopefully get the rest of that finished. So it's midday on a Tuesday. Um, yeah, this is the progress where we're at. So, rock crushers got through this bit. I say I've got through it. Don't give too much credit to the machine. Um, so yeah, cleared that out. And that's cleared over here. Um, so much stuff. Can't actually believe there might actually be too much, but we'll definitely make use of it. Clear all this area here, and uh, yeah, give you a good idea. Quite a decent space, um, so it's a really nice day. It makes working that little bit more difficult, but I'd rather the, the sun and the heat than the rain. So we've got the plant hire. Um, he's gonna come with a digger tomorrow to level all this off whilst picking up that machine. So he's gonna spend an hour making use of all that stone. And we're gonna build it up. So we'll not have a step down. It will all be flat and here we're going to have a retaining wall so just going to show you what dave's on with and he's finished that dormer it does take quite a bit of time and i'll show you why be careful where i stand so whilst repairing these we've got new lead flashing going in um, we have to take off the tiles all the way around and uh, refit them in. So he's done a really good job with that. Gutters and soffits, well, no, just the gutters to be done. And then that's the upper level sorted. So here we're having a skylight put in and we're making our own. So just a, a tip, if anyone's using one of these machines, the tracks are absolutely gutless. Um, the power of these is just shocking. Uh, I know it's a big heavy unit, but um, yeah. <sighs> Look at the state. Don't know if you can get a, an idea of the depth but that is, that's about level there. My smart idea was, I was gonna bring it down and I was just gonna crush the few bits of rock over there. Cause I think there might be a bit too much. But doing so, I got it beached. Um, I got it stuck. And as you can see the tracks, they're just buried in. And not only that, uh, the stone got around the tracks and the stone got inside the track. So I've just spent the last half hour effing and blinding. Um, yeah, as you can see, I'm bright red. Oh God, what is already a hard job made that so much harder. Um, so yeah, don't do what I did. It's half past six, second day in, and progress. Um, just have to prop myself up because I'm absolutely knackered. So this morning, just loading up a barra. I'm getting a mix on for Dave. 
and uh, we're going to block up the internal walls and we're going to do the window you know the the seat window and uh yeah it's a bit of a rainy day it's supposed to be raining up until about dinner time that diesel that was spilt just rushed yesterday completely forgot about it so wait till it dries probably tomorrow and uh i've got to just chuck some sand on it clear that up so yeah that's what we're on with Right, so there we are, 120 plasterboard, 37 of the PIR 25mm sheets. They're for the external walls on here, and uh, hopefully keep the house a lot more warmer, as well as complying with building regs. So, created a nice little beach here. Um, for the diesel that spilt in the trailer the other day, it uh, just pulled and it just leaked out, so We've got the trailer full for a tip run. I'm gonna wrap that up. And um, yeah, hopefully this sand will soak that up. And uh, have a good tidy up of the front. But for now, yeah, gonna have to get a move on. Right, so we've got Sparky Solutions in and they're taking care of all the first fix wiring at the minute. So we got rid of that dangerous consumer unit, which was just dangling here. Um, just had to mend and make do until we got the first fix in. So it's up there all nice and neat. We've got our um, mains, tool supplies, stuff for our caravan, so it's all good. And uh, we've got reliable power, not those few spurs that we did have. So on with ripping out all the old wiring and do a bit of a before and after. So I've got everything marked out up here. have it um very long day i'm absolutely knackered not so happy days today positive and upbeat and um it's just pushing new limits of capabilities of what i can do yesterday and the day before was the 20 ton of rock crushing today is the three ton of plasterboards so if i've done my maths correctly without being so tired 25 kilogram times 120 i'm sure someone will do it on the calculator i'm estimating i'm estimating around three ton um over here we've started putting together the insulated plasterboard now one of the things with this was and why we're doing it separately uh, is to save money so per plasterboard 12 quid including the vat and then per 25 mil board of insulation is 19 pounds plus the vat 
Um, and basically saving a tenner. You can get them already glued together, but what we're using is instant adhesive uh, for fixing plasterboard, insulation board. So, yeah, um, basically saving ten pound per board, and I think that's pretty good. It's three hundred and seventy quid saved. It's thirty-seven boards, so I can do some maths. So it's Thursday morning. It feels like I'm skipping a few days because we've been so busy, we've been flat out. The week just feels like, you know, so for some people it would drag doing work, but when you're busy and you're somewhat enjoying what you do, it time just goes like that. Um, and before you know it, you're going home. So we're staying an extra day. Normally we'd do till Thursday and go back. Um, but because we got the electricians, they could only come on Wednesday, so to get three full days in, uh, we're staying till Friday. So I'm on with finishing off gluing these together with that stuff. Um, I'm going to measure the roof because I'm going to order some box profile roofing sheets so we can get rid of that. I'll take you through what Dave's up to. So Dave's opened up, he's currently on with the window, the skylight, the roof light, uh, got the other one done. So weather dependent, hopefully we'll try and get some glass glued in today. The guy's coming picking up the rock crusher and he's going to level off this. I'm going to scrape it flat and get me whacker. Just show you what these guys are up to in here. So, drill through the noggins. Hopefully we'll get the first fixed wire in today. Everything's been dropped down here. And that's where the consumer units go in. So it's looking really, really good. Right, so digger's been in and it's uh, it's looking really good. It's made a hell of a difference. And I've always said, I can't wait for this <laughs> storm to be gone. So it's acted as a really good base. It will need a professional, uh, some heavy duty roller with a whacker. Um, and it'll need like a finishing scrape and a level. But overall, really pleased. Um, I'm just gonna go over this with my little whacker just for, you know, the sake of walking on. So yeah, really pleased and we'll get to it. So to give you another angle, um, we're looking at floor levels and not too bad. I mean, from where the stone is at the minute, you've got a good four inch to the bottom of the door so over time, you know, the rain, that type of thing, keep whackering it. Uh, it will drop in some places and we can always level it out. So a couple of options with this for the garden and it's something I'll discuss with a, a good friend of mine is what kind of outdoor patio do we do? What do we make it out of? So you could do like a concrete slab, four inch slab, with uh, like porcelain tiles, which I had the idea of. Um, or we could go down the concrete option 
and have like pattern imprinted concrete. Um, there's different rubber mats that you can have different styles, that type of thing. And you can go for that porcelain effect as well. So yeah, uh, we've got options and we'll decide on what we'll go for. Um, but overall, really, really impressed. Tidies the job up. Very happy. So just currently on with core drilling for the extractor vent in the what will be the bathroom. So I've got to do two of these and um, yeah. So electricians have looped in the wire in where we're going to have the spotlights. That's marked out and that'll be on either side. Uh, got some decent scaffolding set up and Dave's just on with fitting the soffit and then fascia later on. So we're at the end of day four, Thursday, and really, really impressed with how far we've come. Seems like a pretty good milestone. And uh, yeah, really, really impressed. I can see the vision. I wanna take you on a bit of a progress update. Um, we've had quite a few men working in here at the minute and uh, it's moved on, we've had a really, really good week. Really impressed. So not a lot has changed from the outside, uh, except for the oil slick. Keep chucking sand on it every day. Uh, should go eventually. So, number one. Uh, not much has changed in here. Dave's fitted new skylight which is pretty cool um, saved a decent amount of money on that um, with the best part of 600 quid so including the glass we got paint we got two panes for 25 quid plus the materials and Dave's labour for fitting them uh, we've saved a couple hundred quid so that's pretty good um, up here, not much has changed really, but, and I'm going to go the other way actually, the electricians have been in and I've dropped on um, two good lads, young lads, set up their own business, working together, uh, one's from Runcorn, the other one's in Hollyhead, and they've worked really hard this week, and they've done a good job. I'm going to give you a bit of an update on where we're at. So this is number two and all my markings from last week are still on the walls. So we've got pretty much outside lights, internal for the landing. We've got a uh, radiator. Oh, there's so much here. All these part, all these cables. Uh, running from upstairs that'll be the consumer unit but yeah the workmanship is really really good so we're running our eight lights through here um, over here we've got <laughs> our kitchenette and um, they took pictures because when we come to plasterboard it's going to be completely covered uh, so you've got to work out Whereabouts your cables are running. Um, and obviously they said not to dot and dab where we uh, put in sockets. So the reason for the tape is to keep it all nice and neat. Because you can't peg, because you can't clip wiring back like that, we've got a damp proof membrane. And, uh, you know, they've uh stuck gaffer tape on the it just keeps it in line you're not going to see it when the boarding's up but uh that's the reason why it's on there and we can't drill through 
closely it'll breach the barrier so i was on with just finishing off a few little bits um couldn't find the right drill bit so we're gonna have to get one um so i've got that to put on there to cover that bit i've got to take it just across there and then the rest of this has already got its damp proof course so it's looking really really good um the window seat dave's blocked up and cut out the window seat and uh, he likes to not waste material so these uh, lintels from the upstairs window i'm sure you might remember on the previous videos how small the upstairs window was um, and we've made a feature out of it so it's sticking out quite proud at the minute but when you've got your your dot and dab your plastic your insulated plasterboard um, and your skim, you know, you, it's going to stick out like that much. Um, so every external wall in here is having insulated plasterboard and that's what I've been somewhat creating today. Um, so yeah, show you upstairs. So this side is a lot more tidy. I had a good clean up. So all the wiring going through here and uh, just puts into perspective, you know, this is obviously the kiddies room, you got your, your telly which will go there, light switches, radiator, plug sockets, um, yeah, internal lighting. So next week we've got windows. I had a phone call from... Uh, Bursco Trade Windows and they've they've built our window so we'll give a decent review on that. I just need to pin this up and finish insulating on the inside. So that'll be really nice. We can get the uh, the windows in, the front door on, get all our plasterboards up here through this hole, finish off that stud work. So, yeah, it's going to progress. It's going to progress. I'm just going to show you out the back because I've been very, very busy uh, humping rocks. And if you can remember, we stepped down quite a bit here. But now, it's all level. All that rock crushed. When the digger man turned up, he actually said, oh, I think there's too much stone here. I think, what are you going to do with it? Um, but no, in the end, it worked out just right. So we've got our somewhat level. It's a bit out. That's the view of the back. Uh, Dave's fitted the faces and soffits on, on there. Got it somewhat watertight. Got some membrane up there. Um, from here, you might be able to see that we've got two of the roof lights. I didn't show you this one. And uh, next time I'm up on the roof, I'll show you how it's been put together. So just focus on that. So it's going to look really, really good. I'm so impressed. So impressed. Actually, you know. Really proud of myself, to be fair. Um, we've all worked really hard to make this happen. My wife is working really hard at home, uh, running the business, which pays for all the materials. So along with all this, you know, we've got the background stresses of juggling money, you know, we've got contractors to pay. We've got materials to order. We've got a schedule of works and uh, we've got deadlines to complete. So yeah, there's nothing quite like the first major project. Um, they say the first one is the hardest one and I fully, fully believe that. You know, it comes with experience. It comes with cash flow, and uh, you learn from your mistakes as you go. But uh, overall, looking really, really good. So, carry on with the tour. I've uh, co-drilled our extractor vents on both sides. 
Um, to give you an idea, we've got where these yellow dots are. We've got our spotlights going in the fascia. So you can switch it on on the inside and it'll have down lighting and it'll look really, really cool. So out here, we're going for the pub vibe and we've got somewhat, this is a drawing of a pub bench and we've got uh, switches for two, two gang switches. So, you know, you could plug your phone in that type of stuff or you want to charge summer or whatever. Um, then we've got outdoor lights, somewhat party lights, and then we've got a switch for our heaters. So you get a bit cold in the evening, you don't want to go in, maybe the kids are sleeping or whatever. Yeah, um, it's going to be really cool. So we're going to somewhat have like a little bit of a veranda, so you've got some sh shelter if it rains, you know, because we are in the UK, of course. Um, here I've marked out where we're going to have fence posts. So to divide these houses, obviously we don't want one big communal garden. We're going to have, have worked it out, there's 14 posts and yeah. So they're going to go in down there, over here, and then we're going to replace them with concrete. So that'll look really, really good. Um, inside the shed, I'll show you. So we've got all our plasterboard in, carried all them in. That was fun. Um, not finished the damp proof course in here. Believe it or not, um, this goes up to two meters, but there's actually damp up here and it's only a single skin of brick and you can understand driving rain, that type of thing. It will, it will come through. Um, there's a few vines which are growing up on the inside. So yeah, we're going to, we're going to take this stuff up all the way, all the way up across here as well. Um, do a proper job. It's been brilliant. Um, I think five days is just too much. Uh, a good happy medium is four days. Doing like 11, 12 hour days, it's just a lot. Um, it's a lot to rack up and it's a lot for me to pay out if I'm being honest. But we can have a few days off. Um, we're back in, we're having four days off. Uh, Dave's working elsewhere. And I'm going for a bit of a break, so we're going to Alton Towers. And I've got loads of things to be doing at home. So yeah, uh, it's been a mega, mega week. Oh, and another one, um, just before I wrap this video up, is <laughs> the power of social media and YouTube, that type of thing. The last video that I did, the review of the red rhino 4000 rock crushing machine um the director got in contact with me we spoke at length just in regards to how the machine performed they were really happy with um the reviews uh, i believe it's like a bit of a family run business uh, they make these machines and they're quite expensive uh, it's a decent bit of kit and I will definitely be using them on future projects. Uh, another interesting video that I'll do later on is as and when we get a project in Wigan next, which has something similar to this. I've got a contact now who has a Tiger Bite Crusher, similar brand, similar machine, but it'd be interesting to see how the two compare. Um, and just for shits and giggles, um, I just messaged and said, you know, basically, you know, we're getting quite a few views. We're getting around 500 to 1,000 on average per video. And I think that's pretty good, to be fair. It's more views than subscribers, so the reach is getting out there. Um, so, yeah, Red Rhino have said, you know, how's about we'll, we'll send you some work work. Uh, so we'll find out what comes in the package. Just got an update pinging. 
Um, so Monday, that will come. So yeah, that'll be cool. Um, a bit of cross promotion, but you can see how traction gains just setting up a YouTube is daunting within itself, but um, we're all out here to, to help each other out. And um, yeah, so that's it for now. If you've, uh, if you've liked the video, please feel free to like, share and subscribe this. Uh, any, <laughs> subscribe to this. And um, any comments, any feedback, let me know and I'll reply to each one. So that's it for now. Have a fantastic weekend and uh, all the best.